Hey everybody, Keith K here, and today we're gonna to do something a little bit different for my channel. If you are one of my subscribers, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, and um, as you know, I do mostly tutorials on this channel, but today I wanted to take a quick look at Age of Empires 4. Uh, Age of Empires is the classic real-time strategy game, and I have been waiting for this game to come out for a long time. Uh, it just came out uh, last week, and um, it's a little on the expensive side, especially for a Steam game. So I could appreciate that many folks are waiting, you know, putting it on their wish list and waiting to see uh, when it goes on sale. Although that, you know, that might be a while. And so I thought, um, you know, I'd at least uh, go through and give you a look at the game. Um, I plan to do a playthrough of, uh, of um, some of the uh, campaign scenarios as well. But, um, you know, here's a quick look at the game itself when you first launch it. Um, it kind of has, you know, the modern look of Age of Empires, which you would expect is going to be highly integrated, um, you know, to their other digital properties and channels and integrated into social uh, and, you know, allowing you to connect with friends and chat and all of that. So that, that stuff's all here. Um, you can see there are updates that come from the development team themselves. Uh, you know, you can chat with friends, although I don't have any friends right now. It's so sad. Um, single player, multiplayer, right? It's the Age of Empires uh, had great campaigns all along, and the community has done a great job of, of building the multiplayer cap capabilities out um, on Steam. If you've done, if you've bought any of the updated versions or the definitive editions of the early games, you can, you know, now play on those servers. Um, and uh, one thing that's a little different is the daily quest. You can earn extra XP, which will help, you know, level you as a player. Um, it also shows you your, your different uh, achievements that you've accomplished over time. Um, so single player is the way you would kick off any uh, skirmish campaign, <clears throat> or if you want to revisit the tutorials, we'll, we'll come back to this later. Um, and there's some content that you can unlock by completing different missions. Again, we'll come back to that in a later video. Community is just what you would think. We'll see how this uh, evolves over time. Right now, the, the development team has put out a bunch of uh, material in terms of how to get started, uh, learn more about Age of uh, Empires and the code of conduct and maintenance updates and connecting them with, on, with all the different social channels. Uh, and then learn <clears throat> is uh, it's pretty interesting because they've got the tutorial which you would certainly expect but you can look at all the tech trees without jumping into the game which is nice um, you know if you need a quick refresher before you jump into a game in terms of what uh, the different things that you can build and at what level as well as a guide to hotkeys uh, if you don't want to rely so much on the mouse and then these are nice because they punch out to web pages that give you more detail um, about each of the, the different civilizations. Uh, and so uh, also down here, something I wanted to point out was these masteries. Once you've completed um, the tutorials, you can actually go deeper. And these are sort of, I don't know, I think of these as extended tutorials. And uh, you know maybe we'll play through some of these in a future video. But you can go deeper into a particular civilization before you start to do you know multiplayer uh, or skirmishes. So let's jump into um, the tutorial here. And you know, when you first install the game, it'll jump right into the tutorial, which is nice. Um, you know, while this is loading, I think the other thing uh, I would say is the sound design is something I really like, as well as uh, the storytelling. You'll notice uh, there's a lot of storytelling that happens in the campaigns when, when we get to that piece. So I'll be back as soon as this loads. Driven from their homes by armed invaders, a few hardy refugees faced the prospect of starting again. They would found a new village deep in the countryside. All right, so you can see there's a little bit of that storytelling I was referring to. The first priority was locating a reliable food source. The simplest source was gathering from nature. All right, and so as you would expect from any tutorial, uh, we're gonna have 
sort of step-by-step -step, uh, achievements or activities that we have to complete. Um, this is a very familiar interface. If you've played Age of Empires or Age of Mythology before, you'll see how much food you have. Um, you know, each of your resources, food, wood, gold, and stone. Um, but what's neat is the rate, which is something, something different. The rate per minute of your collection. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not updated, but you'll start to see, yeah, 30 per minute. So you can look at that and decide, do I need to, you know, have more villagers, for example. Um, so let's go ahead and start producing villagers. Oh, it hasn't enabled it for us yet. So um, we'll give that a second. It should come right here. With a healthy supply of food, the village could start to grow. To do so, it would need more hands to share the work. And this is also something, uh, if you look here, you'll see the cost, which is 50, that's, you know, expected, but also it tells you how long uh, it'll take for each villager that you need, to, or whatever you're training or, um, or researching, which is nice. And uh, I'll say the graphics, you know, they're not going to blow you away, but they are very reminiscent of the franchise. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's fine that they're not, I mean, there's a lot more detail, certainly, than Age of Empires. Um, but it's not ultra realistic, right? It's sort of true to the game, if you will, um, which I, I think is pretty cool. When you have villagers queued up, when you have the building selected, you'll be able to see them here and their progress. They don't show it sort of in the town center bar anymore. Uh, it's up off to the left. <clears throat> Excuse me. The new workforce could now turn to the growing village's needs. First, they would build a mill near their food source, so villagers could drop off gathered berries more easily. All right, and so when you have a villager selected, you'll see what it can build. Um, and right now, the only thing they're gonna let us build is the mill. Now, <clears throat> one thing to consider with this mill, you'll see the highlighted extended area, and that's where you're gonna be able to place your farms. So you don't wanna place it somewhere that overlaps with the building, or you'll limit the amount of farms you can have for that mill, you'll actually have to build an additional mill um, if you were to expand the number of farms. And just like any Age of Empires game, you can assign multiple villagers to make it go a little faster. Yeah, so we might grab this guy here, get him working, and then they'll automatically start to gather resources of that kind. Next, the growing village would need wood to build with. So we can we can get one more villager before we have to build a uh, a house which they're currently don't have enabled. <clears throat> Maybe we'll take a couple of villagers off of here. Speed this along a little bit. So you'll get that alert. Uh, you can't really can't miss it that your your population limit has been reached, um, and you'll see how many villagers are assigned to each resource. If you want to do a little load balancing, you can just move people around like I did. The growing community now had a steady supply of lumber to make wood collection easier. Villagers could erect a lumber camp near the forest. So we'll let these three drop their 
wood. Or actually, yeah, we'll just, just grab these three. And again, right, I can build into the area where the farm or the mill's already set up, but then I'll limit, I'll cut off some of the space that gets a bonus um, for farming. Thanks to the camp, villagers no longer needed to travel as far to drop off lumber. The village now required additional houses to support its growing population. All right, so now we've got house enabled. So let's just grab these two since they finished there. And let's build a couple houses over here. And you can kind of queue, you can stack up the go to the next closest thing that needs to be built. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same type of structure. If you're familiar with the series, you'll you'll have that mastered anyways. It won't matter. So there's two. Uh, one thing I'll point out before we jump over to this is what I was talking about with the farms. So uh, we don't have any other uh, food resources visible to us. So. Uh, we would start to build farms here if if we were able to. Uh, they haven't turned that on. So for now, we'll just throw them on collecting wood until they change that. And we'll build our third house. Let's put that here. With additional housing in place, even more villagers could join the workforce. But a populous village would soon exhaust the natural food sources. To grow, the community needed dedicated farms. There we go, we've got farms enabled now. And you'll see here at the bottom, if you hover over farm, you know, it gives you a little description, how many, the fact that only one villager can work each farm. Um, and uh, a little bit about the farm enclosure technology. That's a later imperial age uh, technology that the, only the English have, which also produces gold. But on the bottom here, you'll see under influence, it says the farm harvest rate increased 15% while within the influence of a mill. So what that's talking about, if we go over here, let's yeah, yeah. grab some it's villagers. Yeah, if you click on the mill, you'll see that there's a little plus sign here, mill influence. And when you go to build your farm, it brings up uh, the farm influence, right? So and you can extend it that far out, but uh, the first thing and easiest thing to do is just build it right next to the mill so there's less travel time. And as these farms work them, uh, as the villagers work the farm, so they'll just drop the food off at the mill. Woodsmen and farmers now kept the village well supplied. Further growth required knowing the countryside and finding more resources. For that, communities employed scouts. All right, so if we go back to the town center here, now we have the scout enabled. And they can see into stealth forest, so they'll, they'll cover stealth forest a little bit later, but you can hide some troops in the forest uh, for ambushes. The scouts will be able to see that. But they are very weak in combat, um, just like they always have been, right? They won't stand up to extended combat. You, you need to get them out of there pretty quickly um, or have support troops with them. Able to move quickly and see great distances, Scouts were key to discovering new resources. The most important thing for a scout to locate was a ready source of gold. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hotkey this. So I'll do, I'll select the scout and then hold down the control key and press any number. Uh, and those will start to queue up here. Um, I'll do this with all of my military forces, but so if I'm, currently selected on a villager and I lost track of my scout I can quickly double click one uh, double tap that and it'll take me right to him so uh, you know you can move the scout with right 
the right mouse button, and if you hold down the shift key, you can queue up movement around the map. So we're going to go around our village, and then we'll go further out from our village as we explore. Oh, so some areas are not accessible. So we'll just let him go for a little bit. Let's balance our workload here. You can see we've got seven villagers gathering wood, which is uh, definitely more than we need. Let's get more folks working on food. And in a regular game, you'll start to have technologies that you can research in here. You can see as the scout progresses. I like these uh, contour lines, um, map contour lines. That's kind of cool. You get a little bit of a preview of, of what the uh, ground looks like off map, just outside of the fog of war. All right, here's our vein of gold that we've been looking for. To prevent having to haul ore large distances, expanding communities would establish a mining camp near the source of gold. All right, let's see. We've got four folks still gathering wood, so let's... Um, let's actually train up four additional villagers that we'll use to gather the gold, and we'll keep the scout uh, moving, continue to discover new places. Oh, and you can see there is a little progress bar under here too if you don't have the town center selected where you can see the, the villagers being trained. And then of course, um, this is, you know, I like that it's animated. It really catches your eye. If you've got uh, idle villagers, you don't want them just sitting around. Oops, you can uh, just click this and it'll show you where, you know, say you're down here and looking at your scout. You can quickly get to your idle villager and let's get them building a mining camp. And with four, that'll go really fast. A well-placed camp ensured efficient gold mining. With a good supply of gold, the village was becoming a large town. All right, so this is the one of the major changes. Would be the construction of a large landmark. These landmarks, they're the way you advance. Um, there's a little tip here. You also get this uh, kind of indicator. We're in age one right now, but this is letting you know you've got the resources to advance. So let's come down here. <clears throat> um, just grab two of these villagers. And when you when you're ready to advance, uh, again, if you're familiar with the series, you used to click on your town center, and there would be an upgrade button there. There's no upgrade button there. You have to select your villagers, and they're going to build a landmark which will advance you to the next age and so here you can see we need 400 food 200 gold and it'll take three minutes and 10 seconds um, i think that's just with one villager so if you add more villagers it'll go it'll go faster uh, and so to advance to the next age you'll here we only have one to pick from but sometimes you'll have two landmarks that you can build so they're sort of um, special buildings that are unique to your civilization uh, in this case, it's the Abbey of Kings, and it will heal uh, all nearby out-of-combat units by two um, for every 1.5 seconds. So the key there is they have to be out-of-combat. You can't uh, station troops next to the Abbey and have them heal while they're being attacked, but um, it's still not bad. It's, it's, uh, that's, that's a pretty good attribute. So we'll click on the Abbey of Kings. We'll choose where to place it, not too far from our town center. 
and then it'll show the progress here. Let's go ahead and train. Let's train two more villagers, see if we can't speed that up. And then one of the sort of neat things is these little animations of workers building the actual structure, even though our villagers are physically standing here, you kind of get this animation of them working around. You'll see it on every building, but some of them go so quick, it's a little hard to pick up. With the landmark in place, the once sleepy village announced itself as a thriving feudal township. The townsfolk had been driven from their homes before, however. This time, they would defend themselves. The first step would be constructing a barracks for infantry. All right, so now we've got the barracks available to us. And you can see that there are two infantry units that we can build there. A hardened spearman, which is going to be uh, very good against uh, cavalry and a vanguard man at arms, uh, which is a heavy melee infantry, which will be good against um, uh, other infantry. So let's go ahead and build that. Uh, we'll just build that right here next to the abbey. Once it had a barracks, the town could establish a standing force of soldiers. Simple infantrymen armed with spears were a common choice for these militias. Alright, so it's only going to let us build the spearmen at the moment. And we'll just go ahead and crank out, we'll queue up ten of those. Yes, sir? I believe that's 10. We'll just let that run and be back. Okay, we're just about done here. The town now had a militia and could look to reclaim the lands lost to invasion. The invaders had blocked the road north with a stout palisade. Although spears were of little use against these walls, the militia could burn down the obstacle with torches. All right, and if you've made it this far uh, and are enjoying the video, please do give a like. It does help the channel tremendously. And uh, will let me know that you want to see more of these Age of Empire 4 videos. Um, but let's uh, keep going here. So we've got our 10 spearmen. We're going to go ahead and hotkey those as well. Uh, so you can see they come up over here. Um, you can double click to select here, or you can just use the keys on your keyboard. And we'll bring them up to the palisade. And just another small comment on the sound design. Approaching troops uh, and approaching cavalry, it just is, I think, you know, fantastic. Um, I love the way that they, what they've done there. All right, so they're just gonna throw torches at this until it comes down. We'll keep our scout nearby. With the road open, the militia could now reclaim their lands in the north. First, the spearmen had to deal with a lone sentry. So you can do the attack move and tell them to go in that direction and attack anything that comes their way. You can also right click on an enemy, just like everything else in the franchise. The militia eliminated the enemy sentry. The invaders had a small cavalry camp guarding the road, but the militia was ready to attack. All right, so we'll, again, we'll use the attack move. I can just right click, you'll see the spear comes up and it'll attack this 
cavalryman first, or you can use attack move and say go here and attack anything in the way. We'll send our scout up over here. Keep an eye on the, that flank at least. And as you see, they'll, they'll stop when they run into enemy troops and fight them, rather than just keep moving in this direction. Eliminate some of these villagers. Alright, so next... Spears were highly effective against cavalry, allowing the militia to win the day. All that remained was to destroy the invaders' stables. All right, we'll let them go. They're going to outrun us. So they'll auto-attack nearby buildings, and this brings up another feature that's just new. It's a small thing, but it always bothered me um, in some of the other uh, versions of the franchise is once you set fire to something, here, we'll move them off. We'll attack this house. It will continue to lose... Uh, health until it collapses right and again that's a small thing but to me it's much more realistic that once you've got something blazing you don't need to continue to attack it to eliminate it the invaders cavalry post was destroyed but other enemy positions awaited further up the road hostile archers defended the next camp which would put spearmen at a disadvantage The township needed cavalry of its own to deal with this, and so would need to build stables. To deploy that cavalry quickly, the town needed to build their stables near the front lines. All right, so we're going to build two stables up here. Um, I'll go grab some... Oh, we're going to get new villagers, so we don't have to worry about it. friendly villagers came out of hiding and joined the effort. Which is nice for the tutorial, right? Make it easy for me. As soon as they cross into that circle, I believe we'll be able to... Oh, no, wait, it's over here already. Oh, and so, yeah, this is something else to point out. These are... The buildings are sorted by age. Um, they'll do these little panels that will come up as we advance. So we'll build two stables here as fast as we can. And this will also bring up another feature, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Again, it's a small quality of life uh, improvement, but it's a great one, is that you can have sort of a unified queue. You can have one queue of how many cavalry you want to build, but it'll be split across to two stables. With stables in place, the town could field horsemen of its own. So let's build an extra house just to make sure we've got plenty of room in our population. So they want us to produce 15 which would be 45, yeah, that'd be fine. But uh, So if you click both of these, you can multi-select, or you can outline both of them, and then you can train across both stables. We'll just have them deploy here. And it'll manage the production across both stables which I think is pretty cool. I actually really appreciate this feature. Let's... Uh, we'll... Hotkey these guys, make them a three. The town now had a rapid light cavalry, skilled at harassing slower targets, such as archers. All right, so we got to cross this bridge, and take out these archers. We'll bring our um, spearmen up behind that in case there's any surprises. And lastly, we'll have our scout. All right, so we'll do attack move, go through them. set our spearmen right at the uh, archery encampment while the cavalry takes care of the archers 
move this along a little bit faster. The cavalry eliminated the enemy archers and moved on to destroying the archery range itself. The invaders' archers and their camp were destroyed. A final enemy emplacement remained, one fortified with palisades and defended by spearmen. To deal with this target, the town would need longbowmen. First, they needed to build archery ranges in the area regained from the invaders. Once more, friendly villagers arrive to help. All right, so we'll get three archery ranges built, and then we're going to be asked to train a bunch of archers, and then we'll move to the last objective. With several archery ranges in place, the town could add longbowmen to its forces. All right, and this time we're going to produce 20. So again, we'll multi-select here. All right, and we'll have that whole queue managed across these three. And they'll just train until we have all 20 of them produced. A strong force of archers could eliminate enemy spearmen at a distance, so long as they took the proper position. All right, so we're going to position our longbowmen up here on this cliff so they can't be easily attacked. Um, let's bring our scout up. I've hotkeyed the archers as a four, so we'll start uh, them moving along the road as well. We'll also bring the rest of our military force up. Might as well. All right, so the entrance to this cliff here is, is, is here. So we'll bring our archers up, and then let's have our spearmen backed by cavalry, preventing anybody from flanking them. It's unlikely in this tutorial, but I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> There we go. So now the enemy troops are coming out, and we'll be able to pick them off with our archers. And we're going to attempt to flank them, but we're not going to let that happen. Left is to the destroy last of the, the encampment. invaders fell to the resurgent homegrown population. Now that their lands were free of enemies, the town could take the next step in its growth and become a powerful medieval city.
Here too, the erection of a great landmark would be the signpost of this growth. Alright, let's grab our idle villagers here. And again, you will have it in the same spot at the upper right hand corner of this first panel when you have uh, villagers selected. And we'll choose, we're going to choose the white tower because that's the only choice we've got. Um, let's put that up here. We'll build that in place of the enemy infantry encampment. And the white tower, um, it acts like a, a keep, uh, I believe. So it'll, it's a good defensive landmark that will um, allow you to uh, train additional troops um, as well as act as a defensive building. A few lowly refugees had founded a small village. Now rose a mighty city. From there would grow an empire. All right, and that's the end of the first tutorial. And uh, there are others that you can play if you go uh, under play. Uh, I believe, yeah, over here in an art of war. We just did this first one, the early economy. Um, there are four more that you can complete and there are, um, I guess, achievements that you can unlock depending on how long it takes you uh, to complete it. So in this case, you can see, uh, you can get gold if you complete it in under five minutes and 10 seconds, silver under six, bronze, if you get it done in under seven and a half minutes. So, that's going to do it for this video that's going on uh, for a little while here, but hopefully you enjoyed it, got to get a little bit of a look at Age of Empires 4. Hopefully it uh, whets your appetite to check the game out. And uh, if you're interested in seeing more of these, uh, please do subscribe so you'll be notified when they come out. Um, I think next up we're going to take a look at the campaign, um, which is pretty exciting. We're going to look at the Battle of Hastings in the next video. All right, that's going to do it. Thank you so much. Uh, if you made it this far, for all my subscribers, thank you uh, for your continued support. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you back here soon.